So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I did this. It's a very simple process, actually. It just takes consistency. But let's take a step back. Hi, my name is Eusebius. I've suffered from multiple things over the years. Um, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, GAD, generalized anxiety disorder, and even a form of schizophrenia. And I say form of schizophrenia because it's not exactly schizophrenia, it's a form of, it's on the schizophrenia spectrum. And you're probably wondering, oh, schizophrenia? Schizophrenia has a spectrum? <laughs> it's not something a lot of people know. But regardless, I've spent my time in a couple mental hospitals, three, and I've spent collectively a little over three months together. Um, yeah, a little over three months, I think, kind of close to four months? No, I I'm not entirely sure. That's one of the things that I have to deal with on a daily basis, is not being able to remember things properly, because brain fog, again. Brain fog caused by medication, and then, of course, memory issues due to my illness. But despite all that, there's one thing that I like to keep up. Weight training. Weight training was one of the things in my life that I always stuck with, because no matter what mood I was in, no matter what was going on in my life currently at that moment, weight training was always something that was consistent, something that was always there for me and something that I could always rely on. And it wasn't originally like that. I, I wasn't originally someone who loved weight training and would go to the gym every single day and would spend hundreds of dollars on supplements, on uh, merch, on wraps, belts, whatever. I wasn't always like that. You see, when I was younger, I was very, very bad with my physical body. Um, I was a very scrawny kid. I had absolutely no muscle. And for the little muscle that I did have, I would hate it because I thought that muscle was actually fat, which in hindsight isn't true. <laughs> but eventually when I kept aging, I learned that there is a very important thing about keeping physically active. When I went to my first psychotic episode around sixth grade is also when I would take up running. Running was one of the greatest coping skills, and a coping skill is a mechanism that you use to help get you through a certain situation. So whenever I was hallucinating, I'd go running. Whenever I was staying up late at night because voices were talking to me and they wouldn't be, they wouldn't go away, I would get up and I'd do jumping jacks and I'd run in place and I'd, you know, sometimes I would come downstairs and just lie down in the darkness using my five senses to try and pinpoint certain things in reality, real reality, that can anchor me, that can ground me. Whenever I turned to a coping skill, it would be some sort of physical motion. I, after all, moving, stretching, exercising, whatever, releases dopamine. And despite the over, over, the over release of dopamine in my brain, there is a certain time where depending on what situation you're in, you're gonna benefit from having a little bit more dopamine in your brain. And I'm not saying go out and um, <laughs> shoot up some heroin or something. I'm not saying that. All, all I'm saying is there are appropriate times when you can use a good dopamine kick. I mean, sometimes when you're severely depressed, you get out of bed, go for a sprint, go running, get your heart racing, get your breathing labor, do something to keep moving. And that can, that can often, a lot of the time, be what you need to ground you. I know I sure did, and in high school, I took up running seriously. I ran six miles every single day. Sometimes it would take an hour, sometimes it would take two hours. Sometimes, there was this even one time when I had a herniated disc, I had two actually, but only one was really affecting me. I still ran six miles, but here's the kicker, it took four hours because I had to take frequent breaks. If you don't know what it is, a herniated disc is, actually, I, ha I still have the scar right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll throw a picture up if you can't see it, but a herniated disc causes a inflammation in your um, spinal cord and that causes your legs to, it's not that good of a connection between your mind and your legs. You feel pain, you feel weakness, you feel fatigue, and it's constant. So imagine running six miles with extreme pain and fatigue and weakness in your leg. Yeah, that's how much I loved moving. That's how much I loved being a person who kept moving, who strived to do what I can so that I'm not dragged down by these symptoms in my head that just don't go away on their own. 
That's why I needed a coping skill. But in hindsight of things, I did realize that I was beating up my body way too much. I wasn't giving myself enough rest time. And so I asked if I could join the track team. And my parents were like, no, you have a herniated disc. Not only do you have a herniated disc, but you have two. And so when I talked to my parents, they were very, very discouraging of me joining the track team in high school. And I was destroyed because I was in the track team in middle school. But when it came to high school, I just, I wanted to, I, I really, really wanted to, but I couldn't because I injured, I have an injury. My, I, two discs in my back literally exploded. And it was a very, uh, let's just say, not fun time. I got surgery soon after to fix one of them. The other one, my surgeon said, would start affecting me when I'm 30-ish, which is 10 years from now. So I'm not too worried about any of that. But when it comes down to it, that is where I hit rock bottom. Not when I was sent to a mental hospital, not when I was contemplating suicide, but then when I was ripped away from my ability to move, when I was thrown down, told to rest, that is when I felt like I hit rock bottom. And I'll be honest, I've hit multiple rock bottoms, but that's probably one of the ones that stick out a lot in my mind. Through recovery, I started to exercise in other ways, calisthenics, and it was it was very labor intensive. Um, my recovery wasn't that wasn't that long, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm fully healed after a year, so that, that's pretty fast considering it's a freaking spinal surgery. But yeah, I, I started doing simple exercises: push-ups, squats, sit-ups, pull-ups. I just did that, and. Not, little did I know, but because I was not able to join the track team, my parents said, okay, you can't join the track team, but we can give you a gym membership. And that's when it all started. I d it did take a couple of time, a, a bit of time to recover from my surgery, but eventually I was able to go to the gym and I've been going to the gym ever since. And the key to that is consistency. I have to be consistent in what, taking care of my mental health I have to be consistent in taking care of my body. I have to be consistent in taking care of everything in my life because you need balance. So this is rambling on for a long time, <laughs> but uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed me talking about my little journey for uh, exercise. And uh, if you're in an emergency, I have emergency. Hmm, that was weird. I don't know why my computer froze, but if you're in an emergency, I have emergency links down below. There's always help. There's always ways to reach out. And I do want to thank you all. When I uh, posted my video about me being suicidal, a lot of you really stepped up and a lot of you texted me, DM'd me and said, it's okay, we're here for you. And I appreciate that. I wholeheartedly appreciate that. So from me to you, I would like to say thank you for watching. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. And I'll see you in the next one. Mahui ho,